Hello everybody, Tilm here, and today I'm going to be taking apart this Xbox dev kit. The first step in taking this apart is to remove these four studs that hold the ports on the back. Once that's done, you can use a T20 screwdriver in order to remove these two screws underneath the stickers and these four screws underneath the With those removed, you can turn the Xbox back over and gently lift on either side to remove the top cover. So at this point, you can see the two major differences between the release Xbox and the dev kit. First is these two boards, which are present in the dev kit. And second, is the height of the case. As you can see on the dev kit, the case extends 1.07 inches, about 1.07 inches, above the rest of the assembly, whereas in the release Xbox, it only extends about 0.375 inches. Altogether, this comes out to about three quarters of an inch difference. From this point, all disassembly will be done with a T10 screwdriver. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this zip tie. And then we can remove each of these connectors. All of them are silk screened or keyed so you cannot get them backwards as long as you're paying attention. This gray connector goes to the power and control port on the DVD drive. The white connector goes to the motherboard, the same port on the motherboard. This IDE connector goes to the DVD drive. And again, this ID connector goes to the motherboard. So let's go ahead and remove these four screws and continue the disassembly. With that, these two boards can be lifted out of place. And we'll set them aside and look at them later. Now we can begin to see a few more of the differences between the dev kit and the release Xbox. For one, the dev kit uses an off-the-shelf hard drive, while the release Xbox uses one custom manufactured for the Xbox uh, application. Additionally, there is a hook here in the, seat, in the hard drive tray to hold the wires out of the place. While well, you can see there's no such hook in the release Xbox. You also have the four screw post, and that concludes the differences you can see at this point. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the IDE cable from the hard drive and set that aside, giving us access to this screw here. We can then remove the Molex connector by gently prying on either side a little bit at a time until it comes free. And unroute the wire through the various hooks and corners to hold it in finally feeding it through this notched uh, hole. Once that's done, the hard drive caddy will gently lift out of place. And we will set that aside, giving us the first glimpse at the motherboard and the power supply. At this point, we can remove the DVD drive by removing the two screws at the front and gently lifting out of place giving us access to the motherboard. So let's take a moment to look at the differences between this motherboard and a release motherboard. As you can see, you have the CPU and GPU here and here. Those have not changed. The video chip has not changed. You do, however, have one, two round chips on this board versus one, two, three, four on this one. And on the back side of the board, you run into much the same thing. Two round chips here, and on this one, this pad and this pad are populated. 
Another major difference is the MCPX chip. On the release Xboxes, it is a MCPX X3, whereas on the dev kits, it is an MCPX X2. A final notable feature of the motherboard is this ribbon cable that went from one of the daughter boards to the motherboard on the LPC uh, and connects to the LPC header. So now I'm going to get this out of the way and we're going to look at the daughter boards a little closer. This is the first daughter board we'll look at. It is the Super I.O. board. Uh, and it contains an LPC header and a DB9 port, as well as an LPC and hardware monitoring, hardware monitoring chip. Uh, the data sheet for this chip is available online. It is the LPC 47M157. Uh, on the back side of this board, you just have the two standoffs to hold it off of the hard drive. Now we're going to look at the DVD drive emulator daughter board. This has a USB port, a SCSI like port, a Spartan FPGA, and four identical ICs which I assume to be switches as they are between the ports that you would want switched. Those ICs are labeled P15C3384AQ Z0101BOC. You also have an unpopulated test connector and a internal USB header. On the back side of the board, you just have traces and the two rubber sandals. That concludes my teardown of the Xbox dev kit. Thank you for watching.